Dave Palumbo here with an RX Muscle Spotlight. Today's uh, guest is a special one, and I love to get special ones here, especially when they accomplish something really, truly uh, unique. Not only did she win her pro card at the Team Universe in figure, but she also won it in women's physique in the same show. Very infrequently do you see that happen. The woman I'm talking about, of course, is Ashley Sodden. Come, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Dave. I'm so excited to be here and to do this with you. Yeah, you know, I, the last person, I, I know it's happened a couple times, but I remember Nicole Wilkins back in the day winning fitness and figure uh, at the Team Universe one year, and I think she was the first person to ever do that. And uh, it's very unique. I actually think that that's a much more natural crossover. You did figure and women's physique, which is way different because you got to do poses and, and one is just turns... Uh, what made you decide to do both? You know, I've always erred a little bit on the, the more muscular side for figure um, as far as, you know, other competitors that I go against and everything like that. And so when I was talking with my coach, uh, Victor Del, Camp Del Campo, he kind of gave me a little, little friendly nudge and said, you know, maybe we should take a look at women's physique. I have, a, a, you know, this feeling, this little inclination that you're going to do pretty well in a category but you know let's throw it out there and see where the chips lie right. see where you stack up and uh you know anybody who knows me knows i don't half-ass anything it's whole right. ass all the time right? right and so all in gave it all my you know efforts when it came right. to my diet my training the mental side sure. the the posing the preparation and uh, and we did it we were able to come out with the pro card in both figure and in women's physique so super excited about it did you when did you decide to do physique like how how many weeks out I was, so I start my prep around 18 weeks out mm. and right at the beginning of prep, I was teetering the line. Okay. So I, this is where I started having those conversations. You know, do I, do I go to the local level and give that a shot? Do we, you know, try and do like a little like rehearsal run at uh, maybe a lower level show? And we decided not to do that and to just kind of throw it all out there, give the best prep that we can approach it just like we do with full intensity at, from the figure side, mm -hmm. bring that level of intensity to, to up level the game. And, uh, you know, it obviously paid off because um, we came out successful with this and it was, uh, it was, it was such a, a unique and adventurous uh, endeavor that we embarked on here. Was it hard to like learn the poses? Cause I mean, it, it's one thing when you, I mean, usually when you learn posing, you do it in like an off season scenario. Here you are, you know, you start in your diet and you're like, all right, I got to learn the women's physique poses now. You know, Dave, that's actually the part that made me so in love with that category because figure, for anybody who's who's very familiar, obviously the people watching this are very familiar with bodybuilding. So figure in nature when it comes to the poses is very, um, you know, front, quarter turn to the side, quarter yeah. turn, quarter turn, right? So it's very like superficial in nature. But when you start to dive into those women's physique and up levels, right. that's where it becomes art, right? This like sculpting of the body, how you position, how you move, the flowiness with it, um, but also being able to display that hard body musculature. So yeah. that dynamic approach and the juxtaposition between the grace with the muscle, now that to me, that was like, oh, I, I just, I need to just dive into that yeah. wholeheartedly. And when we started the prep for that, I started the preparation for my posing specifically weeks in advance. So, you know, we were taught, having this conversation about 18 weeks out. I would say probably by like 17, 16 weeks is mm -hmm. when I started putting together my actual choreographed routine right. um, and started going through the mandatories for that, especially being way outside of my usual wheelhouse with that. So, uh, yeah, it was very fun. I, I take it from the exuberance that you're uh, exhibiting here that you're going to stick with women's physique now? I'm, I'm going to approach it from both angles. So it's interesting that you say that because um, I had this question a lot after I came out of Team Universe. They're like, all right, which direction are you going to take it? Are you sticking with figure or are you going right. in women's physique? Obviously, very different trajectories there in terms of the, the sure. body style. Yeah. Um, so what I did was I reached out to the judges got a little bit of feedback from them. I wanted to see what their opinion was of, you know, where I would do well in the industry. And they basically said, you know, take it in either direction and mm. see, you know, just see where you stack up in the competitions. Right. They said, I have a very nice um, uh, all around shape and package for figure, but I also bring the same level of mus muscular density for women's physique. And 
they, that's what I was told was that it's kind of rare to be able to have that like that crossover ability because that's yeah. kind of a fine line. No, oh, yeah, you definitely, absolutely. Figure, yeah, but, you can come in too muscular for figure and come in under muscular well, for women's physique. Yeah, I mean, physique, so. if you're going to train to be in women's physique in the, in the pro ranks, you're going to obviously start adding more muscle. You'll probably push yourself out of figure. What's your What's right. your Instagram for people who are looking to you know check you out? Yeah, a great, great question. My Instagram is, uh, the handle is at Empower Bodies Official. Um, that is my business and my company name is Empower Bodies. It's a training platform, virtual training platform mm -hmm. for lifestyle clients, um, nutrition, and training. Okay, we'll put that up there so people can see that. Now, is it different when you are coaching people and, and, and working with other athletes and then you got to work with yourself and it's almost, I, I always say it's impossible to advise yourself. Is that why you got Victor? Absolutely. I am such an advocate for proper mentorship, yeah. especially when you're, when you're in competition, right? And so yeah. getting closer and closer to a show, you, there's so many moving parts. It is nearly impossible to stay completely objective. Right. And so you can be the best athlete in the world. Even the best best athletes in the world have right. mentors and coaches to guide them and to keep them on track. And I'm a huge advocate for that. That's amazing. You know, I'm wa we're watching some video of you from Team Universe, and uh, you you look like you've been doing this for a long time. You look very comfortable on stage, which I assume is just your uh, your OCD nature of making sure <laughs> every detail is is covered, right? That's exactly right. Um, I've actually only competed three times. So once at the local <laughs> level, which qualified me for the national stage. Yeah. Uh, my first national stage was in 2020 for uh, North Americans. Mm -hmm. I placed second in figure. Right. Uh, and then once again, went to the national stage. This is what I did uh, you know, a couple weeks ago at Team yep. Universe. That's where I decided for the first time to, to throw in the uh, women's physique and and ended up landing the pro card in that as well. Yeah. Now you have a, an interesting uh, background. You were uh, into rowing. I mean, and I and I, I always find I I used to live with a in college. My roommate did crew, and he would get up at like four in the morning every morning, and they'd have to go and get in the boats, and they would go out and they would row. This was at college, obviously. And I'm like, man, you got to really like getting up early to be a, a crew. I think that's the one thing I hate doing getting up early. Uh, how did you get involved with that? Uh, it's a great, great question. Um, when I was younger, I was actually, my father was, he used to be a, a really well-known uh, wrestler. And in college, he had, you know, all these scholarships, all this stuff. Right. Long story short, he had an injury to his neck and was not able to compete anymore in wrestling. One of his buddies kind of steered him in the direction of rowing. Mm -hmm. Fast forward a little bit. He has five kids. I'm one of them. Yeah. And uh, I ended up kind of following in his footsteps, just to growing up around the sport right. and just really just being an athlete by nature. I just always had this competitive side to me, right? And so dove right into that at a young age. I completed my first world championships at the age of 11. Wow. And then uh, progressed and continued to compete uh, in the sport of rowing year mm. after year. Um, at the world level, and then eventually, whenever um, I think it was age seventeen, is when they uh, voted me in as the head women's coach, and oh, I've wow. been the head women's coach ever since. That's awesome. Now, you never had a desire to try. I don't know if you were good enough or not to go to the Olympics or anything like that. It's actually so. The sport is called dragon boat racing. Okay. So it's interesting because it's it's a little bit different than crew. Uh, or sculling, right? Where it's backwards like this. Sure. The sport of dragon boat racing is essentially like a sprint canoe. So it's like a high kneel sprint um, canoe with mm. multiple people in there. So it can be either 10 people boats or 20 people boats. Oh, wow. And with respect to that, the reason that they actually don't have the sport in the Olympics is mm. due to the amount of competitors in each boat. So it's more of a logistical aspect of oh how they actually God. physically run the Olympics. Right. However, it is interesting that you bring that up because they uh, actually had a trial run with it um, in the World Games 2008. They had the World Games in Kaohsiung, uh -huh. uh, Taiwan. And that is, uh, I'm really excited to say that I was able to participate oh, wow. That's uh, cool. as both a coach and an, as an athlete uh, mm -hmm. competitor um, awesome. at that time. Uh, so that's as close as it's gotten to the Olympics. So, yeah. <laughs> but they have they have uh, curling in the Olympics, but they don't have like dragon boat racing. I mean, come in. <laughs> right? They, you know, they, right. they arbitrarily <laughs> exclude sports, put other sports in. I, it's so political; it's crazy. But there is so much politics in it. It's it is pretty. So wild. is that it, so? Now you still you're still involved with the rowing. Then you're still doing that on a regular basis. 
Yes. However, right now in my training, as I'm embarking in this um, professional stage career here, I am kind of taking a step back from that um, due to the fact that I want to keep symmetry in my musculature. Right. Um, being that it is canoe style, it is typically on one side of the boat, oh, and that okay. can create muscular imbalances, which has been a huge, you know, uh, yeah. not roadblock, but challenge for me to, to butt up against and be yeah. able to bring that symmetry back into oh, yeah. I would do photo shoots back in the day, and, and, uh, and they'd be having me just do the same arm. I'm like, I, I got to do, do the other yeah. arm, too. I'm like, just, I got to even it out, I said. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> so, and then you also have a degree. You said in uh, behavioral neuroscience. What's that about? Is that a master's degree, or is that bio, Is that an undergrad? That's an undergrad. So I have a bachelor's in my uh, behavioral neuroscience, right. um, with a specialty in uh, systems and neuroplasticity. So wow. that is all things brain related. Yeah. How it translates into behavior and how our brains interact with the world and become, you know, our personalities hmm. and uh, and all of the different intricacies of how our bodies work. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, you, you ever had any desire to become like a psychologist or anything like that, or is that is that off? Is that not something you're interested in? Early on, uh, it was before I really had the trajectory of you know life and everything sure. like that. Um, I for a, for a long time I wanted to go to medical school and kind of go down that pathway. Right. However, different doors have opened and um, I started my own business. I'm now a competitor and yeah. all these different doors have opened and this seems to be my niche, my, my area here. Yeah. And so what I do is I really pull from that degree of, of behavioral neuroscience into the actual trainings yeah. and coachings that I do as a virtual coach and as a business owner um, because the muscles are, are run by you know the brain. Absolutely. And so everything is really systematically connected. Um, and I really bring that training into uh, my coaching platform as well as different practices such as neuro-linguistic programming, right. which is a fancy way of saying the way that we speak to ourselves and how it interacts with us on a cellular level. Mm. Yeah, I know a couple of competitors that should probably hire you because their 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 brain is not wired properly. They they got the body, <laughs> they got the physique, they don't have the the, the mindset to, to be champions. So, yeah, so that's right. <laughs> you got to reprogram them a little bit. Well, you know, I want to wish you, you know, number one, I want to congratulate you on on the double win in the uh, the IFBB Pro card. I'm sure next year you're going to take this uh, industry by storm. Uh, you got the mindset, you got the determination, you definitely have the passion for it, and. Uh, it, it, it's nice to hear that in the newer generation coming up that, that we're going to see some great new competitors on stage. I think you're going to go towards women's physique. That's my prediction. You know, I, I don't disagree with you. I'm, <laughs> I was so in love with the experience. Oh. It, was, it was amazing to just get up there and flow and yeah. let it go. So I cannot wait to bring, you know, this, this even more yeah. amazing package to stage when <laughs> I make my pro debut. I'll tell you why I think you're going to do it. Because figure is very um, genetically predetermined. In other words... You only can do so much with your body. I mean, you could change it a little bit, but you know, if you're not structurally the best person on the stage, you're not going to be Miss Olympia. Whereas sure. in women's physique, you can kind of mold yourself into that form that they're looking for. I think there's a lot more plasticity in that, so I think that's going to interest you more. But we'll see if I'm right. I want to once again congratulate you and Victor Del Campo, a good friend of mine, who's your coach. Great victories. Congratulations. And uh, check out uh, Ashley's uh, Instagram if you want to Hire her to get your brain reprogrammed. I think I might give you a call, actually. For now, though, I'm Dave Palumbo with another RX Muscle Spotlight. Thanks, Dave.